It is my nerd world, and welcome to it. Let us commence with the Star Warsing. <laughs> Let the Warsing begin. I am your host, John Justice. I'm in a bit of a mood uh, today, so just a fair warning on uh, on, <laughs> on the official show this week. We had a bonus uh, show. Thanks, uh, thank you, by the way, for everybody who went and downloaded the uh, the bonus show based off of the leaked poster. Is it real? Is it fake? I want to be the one to say it's fake. I want to say it's fake so bad. It's fake. That's not me. That's me being people online that are desperate to say that it's a fake for some reason. We'll talk about that. I have a few more comments on this leaked uh, poster. Um, also, I have some thoughts based off of the uh, the promotional poster about the potential opening uh, for the film. want to talk a little bit about Commando 3PO from the poster. A lot of title speculation going on. Uh, interesting report from AintItCool.com. Wow, it's been a long time since that website has been referenced. I don't think I've ever referenced AintItCool.com, even though it's a site that I used to frequent quite often uh, on the show. We'll get into uh, get into that. Interesting thought was brought up in one of the threads about Shami Skywalker. Kind of relates to the AintItCool.com article about the potential title Gonna talk briefly about Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, that movie is growing is growing on me in um, in rather um, in rather interesting ways that I want to uh, talk about. And then, of course, we've got just a ton, like a lot, like a Star Killer base sized. Well, that doesn't really work, does it? A Death Star sized. We have a lot. We have a supremacy sized listener feedback <laughs> this week. Let the Star Warsing begin. Nothing will stand in our way. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I will finish what you started. Who are you? I'm no one. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. The Force. Calling to you. My nerd road. Just that it in. So glad you're with episode number 165 of the Star Wars podcast here for my nerd world. We do have a lot to talk about this week. In uh like I open, I kind of considered holding off on doing the show. So we've got um we've got this show uh and then we have episode number 166 which will be next weekend. And then uh by the time we get around to 167, holy cow, uh it's going to take me a week to get through all the information that we're going to be slammed with from Star Wars Celebration. So uh, we're getting I mean we're down to less than 2 weeks now counting down the days until something official is released. I'm just glad that this poster, this promotional poster, and this the, these uh, these character references uh, got leaked. Uh, it, we just it was just such a drought, and so it's fantastic to be able to have something to chew on. Of course, because we live in a world now where everybody's got an opinion and everybody's got to be right about something. Um, the debate over real or fake on this promo poster has just been absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's real. It's real with caveats. Okay, so let's talk a bit about this. Lots to get to today. Well, let's talk a bit about this. So if you listened to the show earlier this week, you know that there was a promotional poster that was released. And I did about a 40-minute podcast earlier in the week uh, that you can go and check out if you haven't listened to it yet, where I went and broke down and gave my thoughts on it. And I'll give some more thoughts and a couple more ideas on this coming up in, in just a moment. There is an artist that Lucasfilm uses. His name is Brian Rood. R-O-O-D. If you look up Brian Rude Star Wars, just do a Google image, image search, it, this is clearly his work. There's no doubt in my mind this is his work. I mentioned on the on, on the bonus show, I have a my, my iPhone holder, my, my, my iPhone case is a, uh, is a Last Jedi one, and it's the same artist, uh, to, to the point where he uses the same Imperial slash First Order pill-shaped walls on the background of a bunch of his... I mean, it's clearly his work. But for whatever reason, 
Um, and, and I guess I can kind of understand because when it was first released, I even thought it was fake on just a first blush. And then when I really went to go and look at it, I went, no, this is, le- this is legit. So here are the caveats on this. Do I think that this is the final version of this particular promotional piece? Yes, I absolutely do. Do I think that everything that appeared on the promotional poster is going to look exactly the same way in the movie? No, I do not. Okay, so why is that? This is the reason why. First off, it's absolutely real because of what I just said, the artist Brian Rude, who who did it. Second, we also had that character reference sheet, and those characters in that other leaked photo were uh, the majority of them were different angles than what's actually on the poster. So if somebody was to actually doctor this up and fake it, they had access to a ton of leaked images. And if that's the case, then you would just leak the images. I don't think you take the time to go and throw together a, a Photoshop. Okay. So I don't even want to argue that point anymore, but to the point of things in the poster changing before the movie is released, this happens all the time. And as a matter of fact, there's a really, really good example. And the best example that I can give you, well, actually, no, it's not the best one. I can give you several examples. Um, If anybody, I have an original, and it doesn't really relate because this is a different time now because that's some 40-odd years ago, right? However, I have an original 1977 Star Wars A New Hope theatrical poster. I wish it was in better shape, but it's not. One that was actually used at a movie theater. I have it framed and hanging up um, in, in, uh, in, in my living room. Okay. That poster is not movie accurate <laughs> by any stretch. C-3PO does not look like he does in the movies <laughs> like he does on that poster. The X-Wings, there weren't that many of them. There's like 150 of them on, <laughs> on this original Star Wars poster that I have. Okay. So that's an old school version. Things change. The reason these things change is because in order to get a lot of this promotional material out, they have to get the artwork submitted really, really early on. The stuff doesn't happen overnight. So it's going to happen in the middle of while production is still going on. And when you look at the way that the production of these films is being done, I mean, episode nine is still being worked on. When IgerCon took place in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago. Bob Iger himself was like, JJ had to cut this specifically together for you. Now, we know there's some rumors out there that there's trailers that have been floating around, but that's a separate company. And I think for the shareholders, they didn't want to show one of the actual trailers that they had already cut and made. So JJ went and pieced something together on his own to give to the shareholders, knowing full well that people at that shareholders meeting were going to go and discuss what the footage was. And I imagine they clearly wanted to make sure that it was very minimal, simple stuff. We talked about it dur- during that uh, d- during that week's show. Okay, so back to this promotional art. I have in my collection, um, I have a couple t-shirts and I have a die cast. And I might have mentioned this on the bonus show this week. But if I if I so if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But this serves as the example. I have um, a Kylo Ren, uh, uh, was a, I think it was like a Walmart shirt for crying out loud. And this is where you'd find these types of posters. I have a, a, a couple of Kylo Ren um, uh, t-shirts. And I have one of the Titanium Series diecast toys for Kylo Ren's command shuttle. A couple of things on this. One, it's white. There was a whole bunch of promotional imagery that came out for The Force Awakens really early on and stuff that got leaked. Kylo Ren's black command shuttle was originally white to the point where, just like the shuttle Tidarian, to the point where they even made the toy white for crying out loud before it changed. Also, I am convinced, and this is neither here nor there, I just geek out about this stuff because I just find the whole creative process and production uh, process just fascinating. I really, really do. I am convinced That Kylo Ren's command shuttle, I also love vehicles, the the wings on Kylo Ren's command shuttle, I'm convinced that initially they did not fan out. All of the promotional artwork that was done for The Force Awakens early on, all of it had Kylo Ren's command shuttle wings sticking straight up and down. The 
the toys did when they were released. The um, the models did. The Lego toy did. It wasn't until after the movie came out that they actually went and started changing the toys to make the wings fan out. I'm convinced that one, they went from white to black, and two, at some point in time, there was a decision made that the ship just didn't look right flying with the wings sticking straight up and down. Or they simply submitted the artwork, and the artwork, even for the toy manufacturers, didn't account for the fact that the wings fold out. And clearly they do. When you see Kylo Ren's command shuttle at the beginning of The Force Awakens land on Jakku, and when it takes off, you see the wings fan out, and you see them fold back in again. So this stuff changes constantly. It would also explain why MakingStarWars.net has said that the goofy-looking alien, tan alien figure next to Finn in the poster looks different than the finished version. And also, the guys over MakingStarWars.net said they were told that the the red troopers at the bottom of the frame of the poster um, look different. They were told they look different than what they do. Their helmets are the same, but I think their outfits might might, might be a little bit different. So... I fully expect that we'll see this piece of promotional art, you know, and this is the kind of stuff they chop up and use for T-shirts. They'll sell little posters like this at Walmart and stuff like this. This stuff still goes to market, but it's like they're, they're variants, essentially. And you can still go find stuff that's got Kylo, that, that Kylo Ren command shuttle in white on it. You can still, and it's interesting too because if you go and look at all of the first run. TFA promotional stuff that went out there that had, that had Kylo Ren's command shuttle on it, the wings were always straight up and down. They were never fanned out. They only fanned them out later on for the toys and in the imagery after the movie was released. And I believe they went and corrected all the artwork. So that, that to me explains some of the inconsistencies as to why this promotional poster may not completely line up with some of the leaks that other people have known. Um, somebody put up a video like claiming this thing was fake and looking at it and trying to pick it apart. And one thing that they pointed to was the, the Delta wing, uh, TIE fighter in the bottom right hand corner of the, of the poster. And I mentioned this in the bonus show, there is a Delta wing TIE fighter in the force awakens art book. But if you look close enough, it looks different. I mean, it still has a diamond shaped, you know, Delta, a Delta wing, wing to it looks kind of like an interceptor but there's no notches in it um but there are some very subtle differences to what is actually on the poster and what is actually in the uh in the art book so i and again i just wanted to take well in this case i took about 11 minutes uh sort of giving my rationale as to why this poster is is absolutely legit in my opinion okay so let's talk about a few other things one i personally and again, viewing these films as historical documents, I will be completely happy with whatever they decide to do with the film. I'll enjoy it for what it is. I think it would be rad. I'm bringing rad back. I think it would be rad if those red troopers were clone troopers. I would absolutely love that. Now, we have heard some speculation, and I guess I should probably put on here spoiler warnings, right? We're way too far down the line for that. But I have heard that these red First Order troopers are Kylo Ren's troopers, okay? And some people have made the the connection um, of Kylo Ren having these troopers, much like Vader uh, had these, had his own 501st garrison troopers, right? At the end of uh, Revenge of the Revenge of the Sith. I really dig that idea. And I think if they were clones, it would be fantastic. If he actually had them grown on Kamino, or maybe had this going on in the background, I love this dynamic. The thought that Kylo Ren may have been working behind the scenes, the same way that Sidious was working behind the scenes, Palpatine, in the prequel trilogy, growing a clone army, knowing full well that eventually he was going to try to take over and take out Snoke, I think that would be amazing. Or I think the more logical argument would be that Snoke actually commissioned clone troopers. And that by the time we get to episode nine, they're fully grown and ready to, you know, ready to go out and and inflict their first order isms. They're they're ready to go out and do their Star Warsings. 
Okay, so this raises an interesting question, and this is total fantasy land. I have no, I, I have no, I haven't heard this anywhere else. I just it popped into my head, and keeping keeping this idea of what would be rad, what would I want to see, what would I do if I was writing the story. So, if they're clone troopers, who did they clone? That was a really long who. I did that for dramatic effect. Who did they clone? <clears throat> okay, so prequel trilogy, right? We had the the Jango Fett Boba Fett connection, which I always thought was really cool. By the way, um, I know that George Lucas. I don't know if I don't know if George ever said this publicly. It's I, I, I'm 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 thinking he did because it seems like common knowledge. But I was always under the impression that George stuck created Jango Fett because of how popular Boba Fett had become. And that's why he created Jango Fett. It's interesting, though, because, quite honestly, I think George missed the point of why people liked Boba Fett so much, apart from the way he looked, because he looked awesome. But it was the mystery around him, right? And then I definitely mentioned this during the bonus show, the Knights of Ren. It's exactly the same thing. We don't... We know what the Knights of Ren look like from the art book. We barely can tell from the force back scene. But there's so much intrigue around them because we don't know about them and who they are. And so that really – and without having sort of any idea what, whatsoever. And, that, and that's the difference too, by the way. There's a difference between sort of speculation and being completely in the dark. And I think when you've got a group of characters that look rad – I'm bringing it back, rad. When you've got a group of characters that look rad – and you have no idea what their background in that fuels that intrigue as opposed to being able to pull on threads that allows people to open up the discussion of speculation right way different when you look at like ray and where she came from cuz there's threads that you can i mean there's threads there's threads hanging all over i mean there's the room's covered there's threads everywhere there's, there's a thread there there's a thread over there <laughs> whether it's in movie threads whether it's um, you know, Legends EU threads. I mean, you can just speculate as the day is long, but you look at a group like the Knights of Ren, you're like, where the heck do they come from? And who are they? Like, the only threads you can really pull on with the Knights of Ren is, are they, were they the students that Kylo Ren took from the temple? Which I think would also be rad. I'm bringing it back, by the way, rad. I think that would be rad. I'm also growing more and more convinced and leaning more towards their appearance in the force back scene was actually a glimpse of the future. Because Ray does see the future in the force back scene because she sees her confrontation with Kylo on, on Starkiller base. So I think it would be really cool if it turned out that now one doesn't necessarily have to, doesn't have to happen for the other one to happen. They can, they can not be Luke's students that Kylo took. And that can still be a glimpse in the future and something that we see in episode nine. Or they could absolutely be the the students that Luke was training, and it also was a glimpse of the future. By the way, if that is the case, I would think that would be something that J.J. would show in the trailer. Since we'd already seen the image of the Knights of Ren in the Force back scene... I think that that would be something in a trailer that you could show because you really wouldn't be giving anything new away apart from forecasting to the audience. Hey, remember that quick shot in the rain and the lightning when when uh, Kylo Ren stabbed that dude with the walk on his head in the force back scene? That was actually the future, and you're going to see it in nine. You could go and you could go and put that in the in the trailer. Okay, so let me get back to the troopers and my whole theory. So. Because I lost my train of thought. I know it happens all the time. Not rad. Um, so who would the who would the, who would the, the 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 new red clone troopers be based off of? Dude, how cool would it be if it was Captain Phasma? <laughs> An army of Gwendolyn Christie's. That would be amazing. I think that would be so fantastic. I mean, it would make sense within. It would make sense within the film, right? Because within the film, you know, Captain Phasma was kind of the only one that Kylo Ren got along got, got along with, unless unless they're just a bunch of Kylos, right? That's the case too. Uh, I wonder 
If they are clones, I would think they're gonna have to show who the model was. Right? They're going, what if they're a bunch of Palpatines? (gasps) (laughs) That! That actually is really interesting. Ooh, all right, let's park here for a moment. That's, that's, let's park here for a moment. Okay. There was some rumors going around. I just, this just now dawned on me. Oh my gosh. This is almost as good as my, him going looking for relics um, theory that that I had that takes us, you know, uh, through all the movies, right? Um, All right. So let's, let's go here. Uh, There's some that are, that are very much convinced that Palpatine is going to make an appearance in in episode nine. I, I, I'm not. I don't know how they'd go and pull that off, okay? And I'm not pining for it. All right. Some people have also speculated that Matt Smith, who publicly said he wasn't in the film, right? Okay. I think there's still some shenanigans that could potentially be going on there, but be that as it may, that Matt Smith would make an interesting young Palpatine. Okay. I guess I can kind of see it. At at this point in time, though, with the ability to de-age people, I just don't know why you wouldn't try to to de-age Ian McDermott. I mean, he he's certainly much older now, but not so... He doesn't look all that... I mean, he's aged really, really well. What, <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if they're clones, and what if they're clones of Palpatine? And what if Matt Smith is actually playing a young Palpatine? That's who they were designed off of. And the reason I say that is because I believe it was Jason Ward of MakingStarWars.net said said that on set they called them Sith they called them Sith troopers, and the correlation there was because they were red. What if? But but what if what what if they actually were cloned, based off of a Sith? Dude, that would be nutty. Can you imagine, in the film? Because here's my thought on the opening. So this, so let's just let's go ahead and let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go here because I was going to talk about this. I, I do fully expect that um, episode nine is going to have a lot of um, a lot of nods to Return of the Jedi while also being an original film. I don't think they're going to be directly on the nose. I think I I I would imagine that if you're J.J. Abrams and you were called back in to make this movie thinking that you were done, reluctant to do The Force Awakens in the first place, making The Force Awakens this sort of comeback film that brings in all these different elements. And I talked about this quite a bit with Zach on Knights of Vader this week, so be sure to check out that show. Uh, We talked about the connections and what you could learn from The Force Awakens for Episode Nine, and then we got into, like, you know, J.J. Abrams putting in the Maz Kanata um, scene in there to evoke the cantina scene because he thought that fans would want to see something like the cantina scene in The Force Awakens. I particularly don't care, but that's what J.J. thought. So I fully expect there's going to be a lot of a lot of nods to Return of the Jedi. Um, the Naomi Aki character, her carrying around that beefy rad, I'm bringing it back, rad, by the way, um, that, that bow and arrow, right, thing she's got going on. I hope it fires lasers like the Night Sisters in the Clone Wars. I think that would be... That would be cool and also rad because I'm bringing that back. Um, but I think they're going to find her on like this jungle planet that's very much going to have this sort of Endor, Endorian vibe. I made that word up too. We're Star Warsing and, and, and with it with an Endorian vibe. Um, so I, I think you're going to have um, a lot of a lot of mirroring and echoes to Return of the Jedi. And especially by the end of the film, I imagine the end of the film is going to have this this three act thing going on where you're going to have a battle going off on the gr- going on on the ground. You're going to have a massive space battle um, happening because we haven't gotten in the in the in the sequel trilogy yet. And you're also going to have whatever the final confrontation is involving Rey, Kylo, and whoever else is going to be involved in that. Okay, I envision the opening of this film to be very much like the opening of Return of the Jedi, and I love the opening of Return of the Jedi. I know I read an article a couple of years back. Um, complaining up and down about Return of the Jedi and how it was really such a rehash of the original film. And I can certainly understand, and this is all subjective, it doesn't bother me all that much, but I can certainly understand why people would say that. I mean, the opening shot of the movie with the Death Star in the background being rebuilt is that sort of overhead shot. But I also think that that works really well 
bringing the you know sort of bringing the the original trilogy full circle at a time when we only thought we were going to have like Lucas only thought we were going to have three movies and so you know if this is the last of these three films then it kind of makes some sense to have a star you know a star destroyer open the film up very you know in a similar fashion that he did a new hope and then you get the shuttle uh, the shuttle tiderian dropping out and it's being flanked by two tie fighters heading towards death star 2 right i think the opening of episode 9 is going to have something very similar with kylo ren um landing somewhere where the first order is and you're going to immediately see this new army of these red troopers how amazing would it be if one of the helmets come off these comes off this red trooper and it's a young palpatine oh my gosh that's either like the dumbest idea or the greatest idea ever or you know like i said a bunch of gwendolyn a a bunch of (laughs) a, a bunch of gwendolyn christie's now this would be a good time to kind of bring in the title talk and this article from from Ain't It Cool, but I don't want to do it just yet. I'm going to kind of divide up this conversation because it fits in much better with what I'm talking about right now. But I want to I want to deal with the Commando 3PO situation first before we get into the title part of it because that's going to open up a whole other a whole other can of worms. Okay, so a lot of people have been commenting. Probably the one thing that's talked about most on this promotional poster beyond the Knights of Ren. Right, and I think the Knights of Ren are cool. I'm way, way, way more interested in these red, these red troopers. I just think that's fascinating. I mean, I'm glad the Knights of Ren are there. We'll find out about it. But those troopers at the bottom just seem that that's really, really interesting to me. But everybody's making a big deal about this Commando three PO three PO standing there, no R two, right? And I'm not putting a lot of stock in this because this is a promotional poster. This is not a the, uh, a, a a theatrical poster, so where you would expect to see R2 there next to 3PO, okay? This is something that a, that another artist did sort of separately after being handed a bunch of different pieces of art to create something that they could use for, you know, a bunch of different items, coffee mugs and, you know, bibs and things like this. Okay, so 3PO's there. He's got Chewbacca's bowcaster, the bandolier, and Ray's staff. Okay, so here are my couple of theories on this. One... I think people have been taking the image too literally, thinking that this is Commando 3PO like he's going to war. I think that this is actually a very important picture, even though I don't know why yet. I think that 3PO holding that bowcaster, that bandolier, and Ray's staff is going to carry some major significance in the film beyond just being a gag. So let's go with the gag part of it, and then I'm going to go to what I think it could be in a big way. Okay, so it could be a gag. It could be that they give C-3PO these items much in the same way the Ewoks thought he was some kind of god on Endor, that they they give him these items to distract or to be a decoy in in, in some way, shape, or form. Okay, um, on the Endor battle towards the end, when R two and three PO pop up, hey, you know, are you looking for me, R two? Is this a good idea? And then all the Ewoks go and attack. Rah! Right? Okay. Okay. So that's one theory. The other theory, I think the three PO could be telling a story. There's the one moment in Return of the Jedi where they're in the hut on Endor. And 3PO tells the story of the original trilogy. And he's using all the all the sound effects, right? And and Leia's there and Han's there and you know they're all cuddling up and, and Luke's there and he's, you know, telling you, Rumba gosh. Okay, so there's that. So that could be it too. Here's the more sort of ominous explanation as to why 3PO has there's no R2, he's got Chewie's gear, and he's got the the, the staff. And and I, I I'm kind of leaning most towards this. It's the staff that got me confused, because we've seen the image already of Ray with the with the lightsaber. She has the lightsaber reforged in the promotional poster. She looks rad. I'm bringing it back in the in the in the character artwork that we saw. Right, she looks she looks amazing holding the saber in that picture. And there's no staff anywhere. So. There isn't a lot, I, I don't think there's a lot of 
oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not symbolism, but I don't think the staff has a ton of importance, right? It's not like there's, there's not a lot of sentimental value attached to it. I mean, sure, she, she used her staff to survive as a scavenger on Jakku, but that really hasn't been established in the uh, in the film. And, and we get to the midway point in The Last Jedi, and she pitches the staff off to go with the lightsaber, and I feel like that's a really big pivotal moment. So what what if... C-3PO is bringing those items to somebody. What if this is, what if that image of C-3PO is actually something towards the end of the film? Right? Uh, I, I'm not of the opinion that, like, killing off Chewbacca is a good idea or they should do that. I know there was a, there was um, some rumors going around that a lot of people were going to die on that you didn't expect it to die in in this film. So let's just say for the sake of argument, right? And it's almost hard to say, right? Um, that Chewbacca doesn't make it through the end of this movie. Which I actually think would be something that the fans wouldn't wouldn't rebel and be upset about either. I, if you were going to lose a pivotal character in 9, um, he would obviously have to go out doing something hugely heroic, right? But... Chewbacca's been in the story and been around for a long, long time. The dude's right, 800 years old. Is that how long they live? So if you wanted to carry some emotional weight and impact to this to the story, plus, you know, Han's not there anymore, so he doesn't have Han. It almost it would almost be very reflective of what Harrison Ford thought that they should have done in Return of the Jedi. And that got all confused and twisted around. Um, for a lot of years, people kept saying that Harrison Ford wanted to be killed killed off for, for, for Return of the Jedi. And I think Harrison Ford came out and said, no, it wasn't that he necessarily wanted to be killed off. He just thought that it would bring some weight and gravity to the story. And even Lawrence Kasdan said that he thought that somebody needed to go and it should be Han. And Harrison Ford, in an interview on Empire of Dreams, you know, made the comment that he's got no mama, he's got no papa, he has no ties. It would make sense, especially if Rey is going to go off and do something. If she's going to go off with Kylo or, or go and be off by herself or something, it would make sense that Chewbacca would be all alone. You could return him to Kashyyyk, but that doesn't really carry any sort of weight or merit because apart from Solo, a Star Wars story, we've never seen him have any, having any direct connections. Even in Revenge of the Sith, we see him on Kashyyyk, but you don't, and he's talking rrr, 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 before Yoda goes and takes off. Love that moment, by the way. Oh, I love that moment in Revenge of the Sith when Yoda takes off in that pod and he's standing there um, you know, talking Wookiee, uh, all talking Wookiee with his Wookiee buddy. Um... Okay, so I'm 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 really am exacerbating this point. So what 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 if this is this is happening at the end of the film, and what if he's actually bringing those items to to Princess Leia? Because I think she's going to survive this movie. You know, what if it's the end of the film? We we have our resolve, but Ray has to go off and and be by herself, or she's gone off to be with Kylo, and they've they've now figured out the balance, and they're going to go off to live a, a quiet life and, 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 and make, you know, Raylo babies. And this is how JJ sort of corrects the passing of Chewbacca and Princess Leia by presenting Princess Leia with these items that are synonymous with these two individuals who were so important to this trilogy. I think there's some big significance to that. I and, and and again, if if I were a betting man, I probably would not stick to that theory that I just laid out. I probably would put my money down on this is just some kind of sight gag. Three PO is obviously not going to war, right? He did that in Attack of the Clones. I don't think JJ is going to end up going to end up going there, right? Um, but I think that 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 particular picture's got got um has some uh, has some pretty some pretty big significance. Okay, um, let's get to. The this this title leak that um, that ain't it cool dot com had. And let's talk a bit. Let's talk a bit about that. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. That's the only way to become what you were meant to be. All right. So over at ain't it cool dot com, this is a very reputable 
website, by the way. I've been going to aintacool.com for years. I, I have, don't go there much anymore just because there are so many um, websites out there that compile all this news. And when you spend as much time on Reddit and Twitter as I do, you end up finding all this stuff out before anybody else does anyways, right? Um, but I used to go to Ain't It Cool all the time, especially during, you know, sort of the um, the the late prequel years, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. This was the place to go to. So Picosa Pelagrosa says, Super Spy Phantom Cat reveals title for Star Wars Episode Nine to AinItCool.com. There was another, I'm going to dismiss the Will of the Force one for those that have seen it. Somebody posted a, a picture shot with a potato of a, a, a teal-looking logo that said Will of the Force in the middle of it that they had slapped on the same promotional poster that got leaked. I never bought it in the first place. It didn't look right. It, it, it just it was on a, the, the thing that just got leaked, and I'm just like, no, I'm not buying it. And somebody even posted today that apparently that was the name of some fan film, and the logo was lifted from that. Okay, so let's dismiss that, and let's go with this particular leak, because... Anacool.com does have a pretty good reputation. Now, that being said, I will say I would be shocked, not that this is the title, but that it actually did get leaked. Except for the fact that we are two weeks from celebration, more than likely they are going to go and give us the title. I've said all along that doing that runs the risk of it leaking early, and I'm convinced the whole reason why they've always announced the title way before for all the other films, is to avoid it leaking out on its own. So, out of all the times when a title was going to leak, we were right in the middle of it. Okay. This is what they ranked. In the wee hours of this morning, I received a good old-fashioned scoop from one of our super secret spies, who goes by the name of Phantom Cat. According to the ever-so-mysterious Phantom Cat, he or she has the title for Star Wars Episode Nine. I cannot reveal Phantom Cat's identity or career. However, I will say he or she has a close eye and hand on some on some cool Star Wars Nine stuff. All right. So, what does Phantom Cat say the Star Wars Nine title will be? Skywalker's. To quote Phantom Cat, "Yep, that's plural, and it does make sense in the context of the story." As Yoda said, there is another. Okay. So they go on to say, now I'm excited to hear the Skywalker's title. And I'm sure this news will ignite many a lightsaber battle in talkbacks. How do all of you scruffy nerf herders, Imperial smugglers, stormtroopers, and rebels come out there navigating cy cy cyberspace think of the title Skywalker's um, for Episode Nine? Okay. So my thoughts. I like it. First. Before you start banging away at your keyboard, I always want your listener feedback, by the way. Talkshownerd at gmail.com. But before you start banging away at your keyboard, um, let me dispel a couple of things that I firmly believe are myths. Okay? First off, I never believed that there was any formula whatsoever for making a title for a Star Wars movie. <laughs> okay? Every single time we have a new movie, that's a saga film. People always want to go, and I fell victim of this a long time ago. I haven't done it in the entire Disney era, but people want to say, well, it doesn't fall in line with all the other titles. Just Skywalkers. Look at the acronym. How does that look? R-O-T-J, T-F-A, T-L-J, S. That doesn't fit. It doesn't follow the dynamic of all the other titles and blah, 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 blah. blah. The same thing happens with The Crawl. People always try, when fake crawls get released, because I've never seen a crawl get released before a movie came out, right? Same thing with the crawl. Well, the crawl, the syntax, and it has to have so many words that begin with a capital letter and three ellipses. That, no, it's no. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. That's not how the creative process works, okay? They just title these films. They're, the titles are pulpy, right? Done by the creators. They're not sitting back. I don't think George was sitting back going, okay, so oh, I'm kind of... I got this movie about these clones. How do I go and I make the title as close to the Empire Strikes Back as I can? The clones strike back? I know, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's what... No, no. He thought it was cool sounding, and it was! I love that title. Okay, so, first off, as far as this not matching other titles, I don't care. They're going to call the movie whatever they want to call the movie. 
to me, it actually makes the most sense to have the title be bold. And if it is Skywalker's, that would also make some sense as to why they held on to it. Because I firmly am of the opinion that the trailer is going to provide context as to why they're calling it Skywalker's. I really like the title. I think there is a lot of things that could be done with that. And if my theory is correct that Kylo Ren is going to, this is going to be a, 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 an, a an almost direct extension for, of The Force Awakens, right? And then that, that J.J. is going to go back to all these seeds that he planted in The Force Awakens, then it makes sense that we'd have a clone army. He's going to finish what Vader started. Right. This is Kylo Ren doing that, taking over the the galaxy. Right. Getting back to that idea of finishing what Vader started and his grandfather. What is that? What does that all mean? And again, what if in this process, Kylo Ren comes to discover the true background of Anakin Skywalker and, and indeed finish what he started? He suddenly comes to realize that, hey, you know what? He blew it with my grandmother. He blew it with Padme. He succumbed to the dark side. I don't want to do that. I've got this beautiful woman here in front of me who can be the yin to my yang, my the yang to my yin. I don't want to go the way that Anakin Skywalker went. And what if, right? What, now, my wife hated this, by the way. She hated this idea. <laughs> but what if there's a moment in the film where Kylo has to go and make that decision to fully come back from the dark side and, and embrace Ben Solo. And what if in doing so, in that moment, we get the we get the echo in the mirror and the nod to Return of the Jedi instead of, I am a Jedi like my father before me. We get Kylo Ren saying, I am a Skywalker like my mother and my grandfather before me. I think that would be amazing. And for everybody, I don't want to say for everybody complaining about the sequel trilogy and sort of the lack of connection and how it's somewhat disconnected. I just think there's a really, really good opportunity here to bring all these movies together. And if this is the definitive end of the Skywalker saga, and let's not forget too, just to add some a little bit, a little bit more to this rumor and give some credibility to it. What is the one thing that we have been hearing all along? This is the definitive end of the Skywalker story, right? To call it Skywalkers and to bring it back full circle. I think that would be that would be amazing, and it fits right in with what we're hearing already. I was just reading online, too. Somebody made a comment that it doesn't necessarily mean that, that Rey has to be a Skywalker, but what if she just ends up sort of adopting this mantra, right? Luke ends up becoming that spark, that legend, that thing that... And then again, this is a great way to tie it back into The Last Jedi because at the end of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson was so... knew he knew he needed to tag the film with the kids on Canto Bite. Which, by the way, nobody ever talks about this, but you, know, you always hear people, people complain about The Last Jedi for a whole bunch of things. I think it's a masterpiece, be that as it may. It's rad. I'm bringing it back. People complain about Canto Bite all the time, but it's really funny to me because nobody ever seems to really pick up on the fact that the movie ends on Canto Bite. <laughs> right? You don't really put two and two together, but it does. That's where the kids are at. But the whole point of the end of that movie was it was inspiring a new generation, Luke Skywalker and what he did on Crate, right? Salt. He was inspiring a new generation. I think that calling it Skywalkers would be would be amazing. I think that would be really, really cool and bold. And to me, that 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 would propel my already, you know, uh, skyrocketing enthusiasm for this movie if they're going to go be so bold to give it a to go and give it a title like that. And here's one more quick point, and then we'll move on to uh, a couple other things, and we'll get into uh, to listener feedback. Somebody posted this on the speculation page, and I thought it was really interesting. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and just, um, I'm going to bring up, I took a screenshot of it. I'm going to read to you what the person actually wrote. Um, while everyone, and you have to forgive me to the person that wrote it, because I cut off the, cut off where the, where the uh, actual name was for this. Okay. While everyone obsesses over Snoke, Pelagus, Pal and Palpatine. 
I've always found it curious that people never thought to question where Shami Skywalker came from. Why specifically was she chosen to be Anakin's mother? Hell, why she really uh, even Anakin's mother and just not a surrogate? Was she really even Anakin's mother and 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 and, and really just a surrogate? Was there ever any meaning to that particular surname? Was it an occupation name like Smith or Cooper in real life? I thought that Skywalker likely referred to a family with a history of traveling across space, transporters and the like. But with this Chiss thing, maybe it's more. I don't know what the Chiss thing they're referring to. So um, then somebody at Swang Song Music wrote, this was something that I've been saying multiple times. Skywalkers would be a perfect title for Nine. The chances of the title actually being Skywalkers isn't good, um, and then and then they start to break down the whole a new hope and all this and all this kind of stuff. But they make a good point about Shami Skywalker, and I don't know that anybody ever talks about that. Now I know there was a comic book where it in in a recent comic that is canon and it's comic, so they haven't done it in the film, but it is canon. They heavily allude to Darth Sidious being the one who impregnates via the force, right, Shmi. I still think there's this idea of darkness rises and the light to to, to, to meet it. I don't expect J.J. Abrams to play with midi-chlorians by any stretch. That being said, it is pretty fascinating that nobody ever... I, that's, I was blown away when I saw that. I went, oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. Nobody ever really brings into question how in the world this one woman who's a slave on Tatooine ended up being the one to give birth to the chosen one. So I think there's absolutely something that could that could happen there. And maybe there's something that George Lucas just hasn't hasn't gone and and laid out and said yet, right? Maybe there's a piece of this puzzle that we're not that we haven't been that we haven't been exposed to yet. And that's where this this whole thing is going. So what do you think? Right? Now again, I've never seen a title for a movie leak beforehand, so keeping with those odds, the odds of this actually being the title are small. However, we are in uncharted territory two weeks out from celebration, and it could very well be that it got out and it is Skywalkers. But what do you think um about that title? Would you be happy with Star Wars Episode Nine Skywalkers? I know I would be and I know one of the biggest reasons I would be is is because I don't know what you call this movie to have it have some impact. Right? Will of the Force, Balance of the Force, Spark of Hope. This is the last one. They keep saying of the Skywalker saga. I just think any title is, no title is going to make everybody happy. So let's go on. Let's be bold. We'll call it Skywalkers, man. I don't know. I dig it. What do you think? Talkshownerd at gmail.com. Uh, you can also, as always, uh, always uh, leave a comment on YouTube, and uh, we'll talk about and get your thoughts on it on next week's show. What's your name anyway? Hey, kid. It's a big shot gangster. He's putting together a crew. You think everything sounds like a bad idea? If you come with me, you're in this life for good. I waited a long time for a shot like this. I got a really good feeling about this. You know, if you're looking for a holdover, something to, you know, sort of pacify you beyond the films, uh, all, you know, the, 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 the saga films, right? I, I just want to take a moment and talk just for a second about the vibe of Solo A Star Wars Story. I've really come to love this movie. It is different. It's pure Star Wars, in my opinion. Obviously, separate from the stop from from the saga stories, that that soundtrack by Pal is just fantastic. The story is so much fun, and I I know for me, every time I watch it, I end up finding another reason to love it. When the movie first came out, I remember thinking that, and other people made this comment too, that if there was ever a movie that kind of felt somewhat like A New Hope, it really is Solo, A Star Wars Story, right? When you go back and watch A New Hope, 
um it it plants all the all the seeds that led to all these films that we've we've grown to to love and had such a massive impact on all of our lives and that's not to say the solo of star wars st- story would have done that but it is to say that when it comes to just straight up storytelling and i've mentioned this before a new hope is a very simple story right very sort of low budget uh and it just it's straightforward when i wrote my book in bark i wanted it even though it's a long book i wanted the story to be very much the same you know good guys bad guys here's what they got to do and this is what they how they have to go and solve this problem and that's the thing that i love solo a star wars story for its simplicity i love it for its special effects and its and its music and there's just this amazing vibe to that film i'd love to see a sequel done in a similar vibe there's just something very unique and special when it comes to the feeling of that movie and i find myself wanting to watch it because it gives because it gives me those those feels in a way like empire strikes back does and it's funny cuz that's kind of how i ended up landing here cuz i end, i sat down and i watched the empire strikes back the other day and that movie just immediately brings on the feels man just it's so it's such a great movie and it hit me at such a a crucial young age and being the second Star Wars movie and completely upending my idea of what Star Wars was going to be and the movie ending on a down note and all that. And there's just this very specific vibe attached to The Empire Strikes Back that will always be there for the rest of my days. Solo a Star Wars story has something very similar and special to it. And oftentimes through adversity in the creative process, you end up getting something really special. And despite what the box office was for solo i don't care i think that it was because of what happened in the turmoil of that movie that gave us this really unique special little film and i and i absolutely uh, love the movie for that and so i just again wanted to take just a quick moment and uh and and talk about that for a second something a little bit different than all the other talk that we got we're almost an hour into this we need to get to listener feedback because you guys have uh been writing in with a lot of thoughts. Let's go ahead and dive into it. I need someone to show me my place in all this. All right, so we're going to work in reverse order on listener feedback from oldest to newest. I had several uh, emails and comments that I didn't get a chance to get to on last week's show. So uh, the end of listener comments this week will be some of the most recent comments that I have received. And again, thank you so much for sending in your thoughts to talkshownerd at gmail.com or posting them up on YouTube. All right, the first one comes from Barmag, says, uh, I think it's going to go ben Demption, the Ben Demption way. Uh, also, that balance has to be achieved, and it can only be done if Ben and Ray find balance together and teach a new generation of Jedis who will use both the dark and the light side. Also, the end of the Skywalkers, I believe Ben Solo will be the last Skywalker to have the Force. Think about it. Anakin is Space Jesus. He's the son of the Force. And his children have the Force. And his grandson has the Force. The Skywalkers are the exception, not the rule. Why? Because they are born from the Force, from the will of the Force, because the Force has a goal and was using the Skywalkers to achieve that goal. Uh, Ben and Rey will succeed where Anakin and Luke have failed, and therefore the Force won't need uh, the Skywalkers as Force users, but as creators of of the new Jedi Order. Um, Let me go back to the first thing you said about balance being achieved. I'm, I'm very curious... Um, obviously, to find out how they go about addressing, and thank you for the for the comment, Barmag. Um, I'm curious how they go about addressing the issue of balance. I mean the the sequel trilogy, you know, kicks off with more Santeca, and this will begin to make things right. You know, um, there can be no balance. Uh, there's, you know, of course, Snoke in the Last Jedi. You know, darkness rises in the light to to meet it. So, I'm. I'm genuinely curious how much of a focus the Force is going to have on this final film. How much of the mythology, spiritual slash religious sort of part of the Force, right? So the, the, the fantasy element is the final movie going to, to showcase. When you watch Return of the Jedi, it's all there, but it's not implicitly stated it's more done through the actions of the 
film, in my opinion. It was more about Luke and his confrontation of him becoming a Jedi. It was less about trying to resolve the matter of the galaxy at hand. It was it was more about defeating the Empire and Luke fulfilling his destiny. So I'm really curious to see how J.J. goes and, and handles that. All right, got a couple this week from uh, Sky Traffic. This one here, Rogue One made A New Hope and the destruction of Alderaan so much better for me. Again, going back to how the movies enhance each other. Watching these old effects never sparked emotion with me, but after seeing the destruction of Jeddah, my heart was broken. And also adding to the explanation of how they managed to destroy the Death Star. All right. A quick answer for the person uh, asking whether Leia and Han told Ben about Anakin's fall from the dark. No, they didn't at all. Completely messed up because they waited too long. The only way Ben found out was through the media knowing about his family's secrets first. All right. Um, J-O-B, J-O-B. I can't understand the hate, uh, the hate attack of the clones gets. It really was an awesome movie. Yeah, I, you know, and I'm and I'm right there. I, I, you know, I've, I've expressed this before and talked about Attack of the Clones quite a bit. And I will say it's interesting too because I've made this comment before, but it used to be the Phantom Menace that used to get all the all, all the hate and angst, and now it seems like the majority of the people focus on on Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones, man, that is a that is an epic film. <clears throat> I mean, one of the longest, next to the Last Jedi, and in terms of scope. And what that story does, I remember when The Phantom Menace came out and friends of mine who didn't like it, uh, casual Star Wars fans, not hardcore Star Wars fans. And I had a, sorry, don't don't, don't hate me. I had a bootleg copy <laughs> of Attack of the Clones, just a, a decent cam, cam copy. And I invited a buddy of mine over to, to come over and watch it. And I remember at the time, he was like, wow, I really enjoyed that a lot more than I did The Phantom Menace. And I remember that most of the commentary around Attack of the Clones was that it was an improvement over The Phantom Menace. And yet, um, you know, on a long enough timeline, for whatever reason, Attack of the Clones now seems to be the one that people have the most difficult time with. Interesting, too, though, because Revenge of the Sith hardly gets any negativity. Most... Everybody seems to say, at least that's the perception, that Revenge of the Sith is the best of the prequel trilogy. And now we're getting this, you know, apart from Jar Jar, other people, not me, but apart from Jar Jar, people aren't harping on The Phantom Menace nearly as much. And there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a reverence for that film. I just, I wonder if on a long enough timeline, the prequels will be viewed in a much better light than they were for so many years. I would actually argue they already are. Um, they go on to say, I hate to say it, but I think a lot of the hate for The Last Jedi stems from comments made by Mark Hamill. It seems that he couldn't see the bigger picture of his character, although they may have died, but that didn't mean that was the end of his story arc. Personally, I love The Last Jedi. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this comment with... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carefully make this comment, okay? Uh, and this pretty much applies to almost all... all famous people, all those who create content, whether it's music or movies... I try to just focus on the the content that they create and not the persons themselves. Of course, I will say, because I don't want to be a hypocrite, for those individuals who, say, align more with me on a – or have similar beliefs in, in, as it relates to, say, religion or even politics, you know – there's always going to be a certain admiration when somebody believes the same things that you do. You have those com those things in common. Uh, Chris Pratt is an individual, right? Who I who I do have a lot of respect for, um, because he's very open. He's very open and honest about his personal life, and I haven't really seen him weigh into politics. Okay, so all that is to say that I think I love Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Uh, I think he was amazing in the Last Jedi. Um, on his Twitter personality and him in general, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm just not. I you know, and again. It doesn't ruin my, it doesn't ruin my my love of of the films or his performance whatsoever. But he's kind of a goofy dude, and he's got a different personality, and he's very vocal about politics, and that's fine. That's his prerogative to to do so. Um, I don't particularly care for the trolling that he does of fans on Twitter. Uh, I know he's trying to be pr uh, playful, but it gets a little old. Like Anthony Daniels went through that whole cryptic tweet thing, and. I often think there's a line there. You have to be careful that you don't cross violating fans' expectations. 
when you begin to tease something ends up being a joke. You know, Mark Hamill is known now among the hardcore fans as being a bit of a prankster. Nobody really takes his tweets anymore, his even his joking tweets anymore, all that seriously. And I, I don't know. I find that a little bit disappointing. But um, again, as an actor, I think he's fantastic and thought that the last Jedi performance that he did was one of the most amazing performances of all of Star Wars for him, in my opinion. ZBH writes this, and this is one of those comments where it's hard to tell exactly what the tone is because context is is lost, right? Um, so I'll just I'll try I'll try to to uh, talk about it or, or comment on it just based off of the merits of what they have to write. So they say this: I'm amazed that so many people act like they know exactly how the trilogy will end without seeing the third film. Uh, they've just written off the story before seeing it. If they had done that with the prequel trilogy, they would have missed Revenge of the Sith. I mean, I don't know what will happen either, but at least I'm giving that a chance. A trilogy, uh, The trilogy is like a game of blackjack. Each card unfolds, revealing something unexpected. You might not get a perfect 21, but as long as you don't bust out, that's what's important. So I'm going to assume that um, ZBH is referring to individuals outside of this show context because in my opinion most of you that write in while you have your expectations and desires for how this film is going to end i don't see anybody at least again from from what i can gather i don't see anybody definitively saying this is going to this is going to be how it ends right i have an and i have an expectation right now uh, that Ben Demption is the way this is going to go, but I also fully admit that I, I could be completely wrong on that. So uh, I, I'm going to assume that he's talking about comments elsewhere in the fandom. All right, Misconduct1 says this, I'd love if Ray was a descendant of Obi-Wan. I definitely think it could happen easily, but you know what I think already. You've read my comment on last week's podcast. Great show. Have a great week. May the Force be with you. Thank you, Misconduct. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let's see here. Serial Chiller uh, writes this, as for the marketing, I disagree. I like not knowing anything. I don't want to be too spoiled this time. I knew too much, but not enough going into The Last Jedi. It made my first viewing overwhelming and stressful. It, uh, it took me a couple of watches to enjoy it. I absolutely love it now. I want to be able to soak it all in for Episode Nine, and I'm not even sure I want to see a trailer. I know I won't be able to stop myself. I'm really rooting for Raylo. If that happens, I will be happy uh, I will be happy. If that happens, I will be happy with anything else. I would still love them to wind up on Naboo or anywhere less miserable than Jakku. I like the idea of Rey being a Kenobi, but I don't mind if she's not. I love, 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 love the idea of Ben looking for relics and having Force backs. Now I might be disappointed if that doesn't happen. I need to stay away. Ah! Um, you know, and look, every to each their own when it comes to the... When it comes to the... The marketing of the films and 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 how spoiled you want to be and you don't want to be. Obviously, due to the nature of what I do on this podcast, um, I'm into looking at spoilers. Uh, and I know that this far out, the likelihood of getting anything that's going to be definitively spoiling the film is 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 you know fairly safe. I don't think we're going to get anything this far out. I mean, it's a lot different than it happened with uh, with the Force Awakens when the whole shooting script got skipped. I wouldn't want to know everything. That being said, I love looking at leaks and spoilers because this is all part of the fandom for me and probably in my fandom and probably the reason why I've been somewhat doing nothing with my fingers frustrated with the fact that we haven't had anything to really look at apart from the recent leaks of the poster. Because to me, my love of Star Wars is all of this. It's all the speculation. It's it's seeing new things. I know that there's a certain level of the film that's going to be spoiled when I go see it for the first time. And The Last Jedi was probably a really good balance of knowing just enough to not have the movie ruined for me on a first viewing. But I also know that that's just one viewing, right? So it's a trade-off. Do I want to go in completely fresh so that one viewing is, oh, is great? Or do I want to have the opportunity over the course of the next seven or months or so to look at new details and discuss potential leaks and things like that? That's the trade-off for me that I'm willing to make to be somewhat spoiled going into a new movie. Kenny Ritchie writes this, Return of the Jedi ended with three Force ghosts of Anakin, Ben, 
uh, Ben Kenobi and Yoda looking back at the Skywalker twins. Three could be symbolic of the trilogy or even because it was the third movie in the trilogy. Do you foresee episode nine mirroring this by also having three force ghosts in the closing scenes? My guess is we would see force ghosts of Anakin, Luke and Leia standing side by side, looking back at Ray and Ben. After all, what better way to end the saga? Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. It, it's really tough with the Force Ghost to angle and whether or not they end up mirroring Return of the Jedi without knowing context, right? Um, so do you show those characters again as Force Ghosts? Do you show Anakin again as Force Ghosts? And that's this is why... Let me move off of that, because I don't know what they're going to do in terms of Force Ghosts, except to say this. The speculation of Anakin Skywalker being in Episode Nine. I think it's very likely simply because because George Lucas put in Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker in the end of Return of the Jedi. It's so and my point is that it's not like we haven't seen that already. We have. So it wouldn't be a far cry, just like it wasn't a far cry to put Yoda in The Last Jedi as a force ghost. We've seen him before already as a force ghost. To see Anakin in 9, it wouldn't be like this is the first time we're seeing Anakin as a Force ghost. No, we saw him at the end of Return of the Jedi, so it would make sense. All right, SJ's writes this. Apparently there's a big confusion about Anakin's past. Kylo knows he's turning back. He worships Vader. Snoke told him in a moment of weakness he threw all his work away, and if it weren't for that, he would have won. It's why he made such a big deal of, of him killing his father. It's in the novel for TFA. Kylo knows that history. Okay. Uh, going on to say, to follow up on that, J.J. was asked about this, and that's what he said. Kylo worships Vader, not Anakin, in an interview or a question, I believe. All right. Thank you, S.J.'s. Appreciate that. Oh, one more thing. Um, it's known that Chewie, Ray, and Ben were, at le- were the last to wrap shooting, and we know J.J. likes to shoot in sequence as much as possible within limits. Why does this make me think of the, of those three being on the Falcon as one of our uh, last uh, scenes? That's interesting. And also, again, sort of plays into the Commando 3PO and why does he have those items and is he bringing Chewie's items and Ray's staff to somebody, right? I just, I, I dig that. Uh, all right. See, Tracy writes this. I hope that when they talk about the ending the Skywalker saga, they really just mean that they're closing up Anakin's story. Thus, Ben will finish what Anakin started. Or it'll end Anakin's story in the sense that Ben will learn who Anakin really was. No matter what, I'm hoping ending the Skywalkers doesn't mean that Ben must die and they are just no longer. Yeah, I, I again, I, I really have a difficult time believing that the Skywalker... <laughs> The Skywalker story is going to end up being nothing but a bunch of calamity, right, and, and tragedy. It's got to end on an up note. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest arguments for Ben for Ben Demption is, is that. Uh, he could make the ultimate sacrifice and come back from the dark side and that be it. But again, boy, I mean, talk about just a, a rough family. I mean, look at Harry Potter, for crying out loud. I mean, finally, at the end of the... Harry Potter films, you know, he finally ended up, you know, having a wife and a family and was and was happy. Spoiler alert. Uh, I, I just don't know how you. I don't know how you end the saga by killing off Ben Solo, even if it is in an act of of sacrifice without then looking at the Skywalker, the Skywalkers and kind of scratching your head going, oh, my gosh, what just a just a what a, a terrible, no good, very bad legacy of people's lives. All right, Cassiopeia Art writes this. Uh, I would love to see Kylo searching for relics. I think it's not coincidence that the old Jedi books are so important in The Last Jedi. It's also not a coincidence that they showed us Luke's compass in Battlefront <clears throat> on Ben's night table in the fla- in the uh, in the flashback scene. A Jedi compass, Ben. Okay, I get the point, Ryan. I wonder what if Kylo, in his search for answers and information, will find out that he has relatives living on Naboo, the Nabiri family. Padme had a sister, Sola, and she had <clears throat> at least one daughter. <clears throat> uh, I would give up my precious Star Wars, uh, vintage Star Wars uh, action figures for a scene where, uh, hello there, a cousin, your grandmother's sisters, um, less than three weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused on this. Hello there, cousin, our grandmothers were sisters. Gotcha. Okay. 
Less than three weeks away from celebration. Yay. Thank you for the comment, Cassiopeia Art. All right. Uh, let's get into... Uh, let's go to Across the Stars. Across the Stars writes this. Um, it was such a treat to have the surprise broad, uh, podcast. John, thank you. Ray looks angelic. So beautiful. I wish uh, there was Leia, too. Yeah, and I'll... Look, um... There's a lot of people that comment on this, and I'll read your comments about who's missing off of that off that promotional poster. Again, it's a promotional poster, and that was probably done really, 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 really early in production. So I imagine that there was a level of certain art pieces of art just not being available or ready or choices that had to be made uh, in order to what to include on that poster. I think it would be a lot different, and this accounts for people that are going to comment on Hux and, and definitely Rose. If this is a theatrical poster, the theatrical poster is the one I think you can look at and sort of scratch your head if there are key figures missing from that poster that you think should be in the film. Um, usually an appearance on the poster is more indicative of of the importance of that person in the movie in and of itself, if not length of time they're in that movie, right? Like I'm looking at the Force Awakens poster and I'll see Maz Kanata and she's in the movie, not a lot, but she's in the movie and she is important to the film. So... Uh, I wouldn't get too up in arms over people missing from the poster just yet. Do that when we get the actual theatrical poster. All right. Uh, Alex says, it looks amazing. I screamed of excitement for 10 minutes straight. Ugh, I can't wait. I truly believe this will be the end to a fantastic trilogy. I love Ray's white costume. I can't wait for Dio and BBA to argue with each other. I love Zori's costume. She looks like a bounty hunter. This would be Carrie Russell. The Knights of Ren, yes. I love the Red Stormtroopers. Kind of looked like the prequel design. Kylo was Kylo. I'm not sure about C-3PO. Um, I like him not being violent, but maybe it will just be short. Also, I noticed that he's wearing Chewbacca's stuff and his bowcaster. Will Chewbacca die, possibly? Uh, no Leia or Lando. I'm guessing they must have smaller, uh, fairly small roles. Um... I know this comment's a mess, but I'm super excited. Yeah, and I addressed a lot of this stuff earlier in the uh, in the show. So thank you for the uh, for the comment there, Alex. Uh, Case S writes this. Yes, totally think the Red Troopers are clones. Uh, they're the same height, and again, if you look down the line, yeah, I noticed that as well. Thank you for the uh, for the comment. Andrea F writes this. In one of the last leaks I heard, I can't remember where they talked about Jabba's son being in the movie. Do you think that could be the alien shown on the poster? Um, no, only because. Uh, we know what little little Hutzes look like, right? Uh, we know that from the Clone Wars movie uh, that kicked off the Clone Wars series. So I don't know who that creature is. But as I said earlier, apparently that's not what the final design actually looks like. Uh, Kenny Ritchie writes this. The thing I liked most about the poster is that Kylo Ben Ben Solo is more front and center uh, and has more space dedicated to them than any other character. Uh, episode 9 will hopefully be Adam Driver's movie. Um, Hannah Bukowski says, I'm not the only one who speculated this might be an intentional leak. Yay! Because I really believe this feels like an intentional leak, especially when we are about 15 days away from Celebration and the Episode 9 panel. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, I think that there was a... Uh, I, I think these intentional leaks happen. And... Uh, not things like shooting scripts, but when you get stuff like this, and especially The Force Awakens, because I remember The Force Awakens, there was a whole batch of concept art that got leaked. I mean, like a lot of it, really super early on. And I, I just, I can't help but wonder if, you know, they, if this is how Lucasfilm caters to the hardcore fandom. They, they just kind of let's just let's pop this out there and get some people talking, right? And it would also make sense if they did, and there was some stuff on that poster that ended up getting changed when the movie came out, too, because that would help when it comes to doing future intentional leaks. I don't think we'll ever find out, unless it's decades down the line, like I found out with that with that uh, podcast uh, 94 in the interview with the guy that used to run uh, the Lucasfilm fan, uh, Lucasfilm fan Club that said that he intentionally went and put out um, leaks. All right. Uh, uh, Amaparo Rivera says this. I'm having a heart attack right now. I don't want to curse, but damn, this looks good. One of the Knights of Ren looks like an ancient samurai. It's the one right next to Kylo's right sh uh, 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 shoulder. I already put this as my desktop wallpaper in my office. All right. Uh, I Love Bose says, this is real. I'm surprised not to see Hux. As I said earlier, uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much until we get to the um, 
the theatrical poster. Same thing for, for Agnes, who says, no, Rose, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I think Rose is going to end up having a smaller role in this film. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about her not being on the poster. Um, Obsidian says, it's missing some polish, but the poster looks great. I'm digging Ray's new look. She reminds me of Padme. Yeah, I get that. Um, I, I totally get that that vibe uh, That vibe as well. Uh, let's see. I think we just have one more. Um Anthea Gaia says, super excited to finally get some leaks. I love the fact the Knights of Ren are on this poster. Do you think we may possibly get a scene of the Knights of Ren that corresponds with Ray's vision? And this is stuff that I actually talked about earlier in the show. And get a scene where the Knights of Ren that corresponds with Ray's vision when she touched the, the Legacy Saber at Maz's castle. You mentioned it as a force back scene, but could it be a force forward scene? Yes, I do believe that's possible. Uh, in that scene, it looks like Kylo kills one of the knights to save Rey. Yep, that's the guy with the walk on his head. Um, could that happen in 9? And do you think it may be the turning point of the movie where Kylo, Kylo's knights turn on him? I hope that's possibly a scene we get in 9. Now, that part of it I didn't think about. That is very, very interesting. And I'm glad that I'm wrapping up the listener feedback with that. Because I think that Amy there makes a really, really interesting and relevant point. And that is, if that scene is a... And I know that there's been... I know there's been... And, and, and feel free to email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. I'll probably find out between now and then, but do it anyways or leave me a comment on YouTube. I know that it's been discussed that whoever that person is wearing the walk that Kylo cuts down, that they're like a clan member or something like this, Okay. I think that's been talked about. I think Pablo Hidalgo has, has mentioned that before. So that being said, that is very interesting if it turns out that that particular force vision was the future and that was the moment where that particular person was going to go and hurt Ray and Kylo cut him down and this begins the – this starts Kylo's turn. Um, I'd have to see it play out if that's the case because this could potentially turn into another – Ray and Kylo teaming up to battle the Knights of Ren like they did the Praetorian Guards, which would be a bit repetitive. I'm not saying it couldn't work. It would just be a bit repetitive. But that's a really, really interesting line of thinking. All right, lots to chew on in these last less than two weeks. So looking forward to hearing your con your comments on the entire show this week. Um, as always, if you're looking for something to fill the time, between now and Celebration, apart from this show, and you want a good um, news series, science fiction, a space opera epic that's got a romance in the middle of it for those that are old enough to know that's very much... Well, I'll tell you what. For the old schoolers, it's kind of like saying anything. For the new schoolers, it's kind of like Ready Player One, the romance in the middle of this book. But this is the story of what happens to the planet and how humanity ends up populating the stars. It's called Embark. This is the book that I wrote, and it's available on Amazon.com right now. I'd really appreciate it, and it'd be a great way for you to go support the show. If you'd go to Amazon, type in Embark, John J. Owen Justice, and pick up uh, the copy of your choice, whether it's the ebook, the paperback, or the um, audiobook. All of them are available there. As I mentioned earlier, the follow-up is finished. Uh, it is called Embark, Treasure in Darkness. I'm in the middle of editing it right now, and it should be out in the next few months. I can't wait to get the story out there. So if you have not picked up Embark yet, please go and do so as soon as you're done listening to the show. Uh, and it means the world to me when I put a new podcast out, and then I go and I check my sales, and I saw some people went and purchased the book. That is because uh, it's really hard to sell books. <laughs> It's not an easy thing to do. It's almost as hard to sell a book as it is to write one. So go to Amazon.com and pick up my space opera epic. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And with that, we'll wrap the show up back next week. Uh, one more show. No, two more shows, right? So this week. No, one more show. We got one more show. And then we're, and then we're at celebration for the big show. So looking forward to one more show before celebration. Uh, have yourself a fantastic week again. And I will talk to you real soon. The Force will be with you, always. My Nerd Road.